How's it going? It's Rocky. So it's the start of quarter three for the year 2022. And like what one of my friends like to tell me, scared money don't make money. So for this quarter, we're going to turn it all around and we're going to pretty much start the week strong. And this is how week 27 turned out for us this week on the series that I like to call my 5 to 9 after the 9 to 5. <music> So as usual, I like to see the hourly chart for the entire week just to give the overview of how the week turned out. And if you look at the left here, there's not a lot of volume and that's mainly because the US market was closed due to the 4th of July in the US. So really, it's a four trading days for the week, but since it's the futures market, really it's open 24 seven. So it doesn't really affect you much. And that's the reason why if I put the lines here, you can see that I was able to trade on 4th of July. And for the entire week, I did a total of seven trades where four of them was long and three was short. And for this week, I'm gonna try and focus more on the trade analysis, the trade strategy, because for most folks, like the feedback I've been told, they just care about how you made money, right? So, so this trade that I'm showing occurred on Tuesday where if you recall, the market crashed a little bit we hit a five day low for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And I actually did a short, so check out the link above. It's, uh, it was a worrisome trade only because, you know, I have that tendency to try to catch a falling knife. But this time around, I made sure that I kept things tight so I wouldn't fall into what failed me in the past. So pretty much after we hit that five day low, I was watching it a little bit because usually there's a bit of a sentiment for it to bounce back a little. And on the time base on the left here, uh, I was seeing a bit more divergence in the MACD. Yes, we're below the zero line, so it was still a bit risky, uh, but I was seeing the stochastic RSI heading to the overbought side, which is when I like to go long. What really did it for me is on the tick base side, because if you see on the tick base side, I was seeing more divergence in the MACD and we were closer to above that zero line. And also on the stochastic RSI, we were on the overbought. So that's the reason why I did enter with two contracts at 30,388 and pretty much uh, exited about 15 minutes later. If you look at the time base, uh, again, it's a lot cleaner if you look at what I have on the right, which is a tick base with high Kenoshi candles. And I was able to exit at 30,494. So just a quick math from 388 to 494, that is essentially 106 points. So since I traded with two contracts, 106 points times 10, that's 1,060. So I made over a grand in just 15 minutes. So I say that was quite a good trade. Here's another trade that I wanted to talk about. And with this one, I went short I was pretty much following the action that was occurring here after this pretty big red candle that occurred uh, on this five minute candle here that had a range of 40 points. I ended up going short because on the time base side, the crossover occurred and we were on the oversold side. So that's when I like to short. And basically on the tick base side, uh, this is one of those where you can see that they did not link up with each other, but that's okay. Cause with, uh, with this one, uh, you know, I was able to short at 30,907 and then I was able to cover, let's just say 3890, just to make the math easier in my head. So that's essentially just 17 points that I shorted. And because it's two contracts where each contract is $5. So, you know, two is $10 with 17 points, it'd be $170 on this trade. And what I wanted to point out is I, you know, it could have gone further out where I could have made more points to down to 816. So, you know, 700 points, right? That could have, we could have gained from this trade, but that's fine because with how volatile the market is, I, I, once I see a profit, I really just place the OCO right away. And that's the reason why I was stopped out here because you can see from this candle that turned green and that's how I was stopped out. And I, I'm okay with that with the way the markets are going, you really just got to protect yourself and really adapt. So whatever strategy you have, you just got to adapt to what works. 
and you never know what really works or what doesn't but what's great is that you have that base so you don't panic as much so as long as you have the base and the system you should be fine here's another trade that i want to talk about where i was stopped out and we were profitable from it but we left again a lot in the table by exiting a little early well with this trade you know covered at 416 I could have gotten down, you know, another hundred points, so a thousand dollars. But again, with the volatility, it's just best to protect yourself because I've seen too many hundred point five minute candles, and that could really, really make things very bad. But I just want to talk to you about my entry and exit on this one. So on the time base, you can see that basically I entered right before the crossover because it was showing signs of that occurring. And we were on the oversold side so that's when i like to short and on the tick base side the reason i had more confidence was the crossover already occurred before that on the macd and we are on the oversold side so pretty much i shorted at 31 429 with two contracts and once i saw some profit i pretty much placed my oco and basically with this trade you know 416 to 429 that's just 13 points but hey profit is profit and that equated to $130 of profit to end the week. Yes, I know I could have gained a whole lot more, but just playing it safe. Uh, quick little trades is how I'm surviving right now. And we shall see if that strategy will, will relate to a much stronger quarter three. And so far, it's been a great start for, for the week. Now here is the account statement because not a lot of traders do this and I do this because it's a nice journal for me to keep track and it just shows transparency right up and down and show you exactly how I'm doing. So I am recording uh, Friday July 8th about 9.41 p.m. in the Pacific Coast and what I'm showing here is essentially from Sunday July 3rd to today Friday July 8th and looking at the description here you can see that I did not have any mark to market because I kept my trades pretty short and I decided to pay myself. So I withdrew $500 from the account. So what we'll do is we will add that back to our ending cash. So for the week, we had a ending cash of $40,189.77. But we did withdraw $500, so we will add that back to that ending cash. And essentially our starting cash, we'll subtract our starting cash of $36,319.17. And for the week, for quarter three, 2022, I like that we started it positive with a net profit of $4,370.66. So divided that by 40 hours, that was an hourly rate of $109.27. And again, percentage-wise is a good way to measure yourself if you'd like to measure yourself with other statistics. So with the $4,370.60, divided that by our starting cash of 36319.17. And uh, let's multiply that by 100. And our percentage for the week was... 12.03 percent so again a great start for q3 2022 i hope we continue this momentum i'm going to focus my content a lot more on trade analysis and really the you know how do i enter and how do i exit a trade to hopefully help you out uh please give me give, give me feedback because i i really want to grow this channel as much as i can uh please do like and subscribe if you haven't already but if you didn't like what you see, give me another chance. And hopefully on our next content, you do like what you see then. All right. Have a good one.